Madam Secretary. I want to comment first about the demonstrations and the change of governments going on in the Middle East and the Mediterranean. And I think everybody is excited about that and always hopeful. I am hopeful, but not overly optimistic because of the long-term history of a thousand years that they don't readily adapt to true liberty. The one thing, though, that might be different is the use of the Internet. And that is a very positive, and yet governments are very strong. And that was the first thing they closed down over there because the last thing governments want is information to get out. But a lot of people in this country have come to the conclusion that our policy overhaul has been inconsistent, that sometimes we support the bad guys and the bad guys become our enemies. For instance, we worked with Osama bin Laden when he was fighting the Soviets. We were allies with Saddam Hussein when he was fighting the Iranians. We certainly propped up the Shah of Iran for 26 years, and that bred resentment and hatred. It ushered in an age that now you're dealing with because we have radicals in Iran. So it goes on and on. But we now have propped up Saudi Arabia for a long time, sell them a lot of weapons, and yet 15 of the Saudis were part of the 9-11 disaster. And even the 9-11 Commission said that our presence there had a lot to do with that. But we keep supporting Algeria, Morocco, Yemen, all these dictators, and yet we pretend that as soon as, well, it looks like the dictator might fall, we're all for a democracy and we're for freedom and we're against these dictators. I don't think the people over there understand. I don't think our people in this country quite understand uh, either. Um, you, you mentioned in your comments about Iraq or uh, Libya that nothing should be taken off the table, which is to me a little frightening because the previous administration would say that when they would be asked questions about first strikes, uh, prevent, preemptive war, nuclear first attacks. That scares the living daylights out of me when nothing is taken off the table. Uh, and, and I dread the fact that we're, we might be considered military uh, activity in, in Libya. I mean, we're flat out broke. We're in all these countries. The war is expanding. We're bombing in, uh, uh, in Pakistan. We're dealing in Yemen. Uh, we, we really don't have total control of, uh, of Iraq and partial control of Afghanistan. And it goes on and on. But the question I have is, isn't there a limit uh, to, to supporting these dictators. And I, of course, take a position which the least involvement, the better, and deal with people on different terms rather than uh, saying, you know, we'll buy our friends. I think a friend bought is not a friend. And I think a friend that is coerced by military power is not a friend and breeds resentment. But what would be wrong with swearing off support for and aid for all dictators? Just think of what might happen in the Middle East if you did that. I mean, here we've supported Egypt. $70 billion, they have a lot of weaponry there. Now, who knows what kind of friends they're going to be with, with Israel. Has this been beneficial to Israel with all these weapons here? But why wouldn't Israel be a lot better off if we swore off all aid to all dictators in that country as a moral position and as a good position for our national defense and our national security as well as a good position uh, for Israel? Well, Congressman, uh, you make uh, a very... Uh passionate argument and my response uh, is that you know the United States over the course of its entire diplomatic history has had to make uh, some very difficult decisions and we try to balance what we believe to be in our interests sometimes and I would argue most times we get it right sometimes we don't take Egypt for example um, I believe that it was uh, in America's interests and in Israel's interests uh, to support Egypt following the Camp David Accords. Uh, 30 years of peace between Egypt and Israel, albeit uh, you know, not a warm and fuzzy peace, but nevertheless a peace, uh, was a, an essential uh, element of Israel's ability to develop and continue to strengthen itself uh, and in, in a very tough neighborhood. The fact that we did have those relationships in Egypt uh, made it possible for us to have very frank conversations and prevent what we now see going on in Libya. May I interrupt just a second to say to ask, uh, is there no chance in the world that Israel might not be better off though, under these conditions? It seems like they could be worse off with what's happening over there, mainly because they'll be, these dictators will have our weapons and they may well be turned against Israel. Well, I think you know, the qualitative 
uh, military edge that we guarantee Israel protects against that. But I think Israel, certainly in my conversations at the highest levels, prefer predictability, prefer stability, do not want vacuums created that could Thank lead you. to very bad outcomes for them. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, Mr. Sears of uh, New Jersey is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam